a recording going and I will. Okay, so we had a question and then, and of course we're tying, since I just started the recording, Bluegill Gurgler. And Bluegill Gurgler is fish just like a popper pretty much. Uh, it doesn't pop quite as much as a cup face popper would pop, but just twitch it a little bit and then strip it across the top of the water, twitch a little bit, just kind of whatever works with it. But that's uh, uh, generally how I fished it. That, and I've only fished it a couple of times, but again, caught, caught fish both times with it. Okay, and I will put a list of the materials in the YouTube description. So the Zoom video will be up tonight. It goes up automatically, but I'll post the one out of the camera, the high-res one out of the camera, uh, probably tomorrow. So you didn't try it as a hopper dropper? I did not try it as a hopper dropper, but I don't know why it wouldn't work just fine as a hopper dropper. Um, and if I'm going to critique my own fly, I think I have a little bit too much marabou on the tail of this particular copy. I like it a little thinner than that, but it uh, seemed to work fine. Fish, fish seem to like it just fine. All right, so let's get a hook in the vise. And I am using 140 denier and brown. Olive works fine. Gold, black, black would work fine. And I'm going to start about a hook eye and a little bit more behind the, um, behind the eye of the hook. Because you know, I like to mark the forward portion of my body with my thread. In other words, I don't like, I don't like to wrap my thread any farther forward than my body materials would be. That kind of makes a little mark there for me. And so I'm going to start that thread there. That's where the front of our dub body is going to be. And we're going to wrap that all the way back. Doesn't have to be touching wraps. We're going to wrap that all the way back to the bend of the hook or just above the barb on this particular hook. So, yep, right about, right about the barb. And then bring your thread back up to just in front of the hook point, just where you won't hang, snag your, your thread on the hook point. Now, the only thing about mini marabou is it varies widely in quality and thickness. And you can see it, this, this tip's a little bit webby. If you have one that's a, a webby tip like that, because it actually looks more like a hackle feather than it does marabou, you can just pick that out. And now you have, now you have a nice marabou tail. And so whether you want a thick tail, or I, I think I put in your packet probably four or five feathers. So whether you want a thick tail or a thin tail, you can use one or two. And this one's pretty bushy once I picked off that, um, that uh, webby piece. And, uh, and if, if you don't like the little thin pieces of marabou here, you can also pick those with your, with your thumbnail, just grab them and pick them off. And now we've got something that is quite a bit, quite a bit bushier. Mm if you want that. Now, I'm gonna grab another piece of marabou here. And this is one that is a really nice one for a small one. So I'll go ahead and use this one. I'm only going to use one, one piece of marabou on mine. And you want it about a hook, hook shank in length, I guess. And so our tie-in point is going to be right where our thread is there. So let me... So we'll measure about that hook shank, transfer that back to our thread. And then move the marabou to our material hand, give it a couple of loose wraps and then tighten down. Now, if it's a little shorter, a little longer, y'all, it doesn't matter. Bass and bluegill eat it, it's, it's a tail. It's fine. Now, if you want to add a little flash to this, certainly add a little crystal flash or any, anything you want. You can hang legs off the back of this if you want. Uh, we're not going to do that tonight, but you can, you can certainly do that. So then while holding your marabou up, wrap back, kind of hold it up and towards you, wrap back to about the hook point, and then wrap back forward. I'm sorry, the hook barb, excuse me, wrap back to the hook barb and then wrap back to the hook point. And then trim off your 
excess marabou. And I'm gonna clean that up a little bit if I can not cut my thread. If you wanna wrap, make a couple of more wraps just to get some of those scraggly pieces of marabou down, that, that's fine as well. Now this little thread base where I tied the marabou down, that's, that's the area in which we're going to wrap our hackle. So the hackle is gonna start back at, at the back of the, the base of the tail and is going to go to the front part of that thread base. So let's move our thread back to the base of the tail, and just, which is just above the hook barb and let it hang there. Now it is, it is your choice on these hackle feathers. Most of the ones that you have are probably a little big for this fly, but one thing, one nice thing about a popper or a topwater like this, it doesn't hurt for it to be big because once it gets in the water, those, those hackle fibers will, will kind of flow back. So it can be a little big, but we do want to use, tie it in by the tip and primarily use these tip feathers. Now you notice the feather has a curve to it. So as, as I'm holding this in my material hand, I want that curve to be toward the rear of the hook. So in order for that to happen, when I tie this in, I want the curve facing the hook shaft. Because if, if it faces the other way, it'll go in like a dry fly with those fibers of the feather pointing forward and, and we don't want that. So that curve, when we tie it in, we want it toward the shank of the hook. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread the fibers out a little bit here and just get me a little tie-in point. And then I am going to tie that in with a couple of wraps and then just wrap that feather forward to the front of our thread base and then just snip it off there. Bill. Yes, sir. I, I didn't quite. Okay, the I'm the in, in, in like like this. No, point toward point of the feather toward the point of, uh, toward the eye of the hook. Like so. Yep. And with the curve, with the concave part of the curve facing the hook shaft. Yeah. Yep. It's not really critical on the concave part, but it just. Uh, Makes the fibers lay back a little bit, a little bit better. All right, once you get it tied in, we're just going to wrap this forward and don't put a lot of, a lot of pressure on it because the front of that feather is not, the tip of that feather is not real strong. Uh huh. Yep, you trim off the excess on the tip. Yeah. And if you have trouble rotating the feather all the way around, just rotate it to the far side and put a finger on it. And then you can grab it underneath with your other hand. That's pretty, pretty close wrap, right? Yep, pretty close wraps. I'm in. Uh, just close wraps all the way to the front of that thread uh, base or until you run out of feather. And it's not critical, Orlando. It's any, it's, you just want a nice little collar back there and then <laughs> tie it off at the front. And I've, and I've trapped a few fibers there. That's fine. We'll trim those out. We're covering that hook with dubbing anyway so they won't show. And so then at the end, trim off that excess and I'm going to come in and trim off those few fibers just to make it look a little neater.
Mm-hmm. All right. And you can you can see how those feather fibers kind of point to the rear. That's because we we tied that concave side toward the hook. Basically, at this point, we have a short woolly booger without without the chenille body. Okay. Everybody have their feathers, their hackle? Just about, okay. Zoom folks, are we, we good on the hackle? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay, good. All right, now take one of your pieces of foam. We want to tie this one tan side down. Um, actually, my favorite color, everybody has their favorite. Catch, what's your favorite color of popper? You can only have one the rest of your life. What's, what's your favorite <laughs> color of popper? <laughs> I like a boogle black. A boogle black. Well, I have. My favorite color is a dark green. I think they call it moss green on a boogle bug or whatever, followed by yellow. But you know, a lot of folks like yellow. But so we're going to tie a tan, which is either one of those colors. Um, and what we want to do is cut with our scissors. Take our scissors and cut a little point on the uh, on the foam. And the and the angle is the steepness of the angle is totally up to you. But I like. I like something about like that, which is probably just under 45 degrees. You don't want it a real stubby point because it makes it hard to tie in and then fold back over. Because we're going to tie this in and then fold it over. So we want, we want to have a little bit, little bit of, a, of a point there. All right. So lay that point with the tan side up because that's what we want on the bottom so because once we fold it over the tan will be on the bottom and it's usually easier to angle it toward you don't don't start with it flat on top of the hook start with it at about a 45 degree angle toward you now i'm, I'm taking my thread back right to the end of my hackle and i'm going to line up the corner of my cut corner of my point with that thread right there, just like that. Take a couple of loose wraps, then cinch down on it. And then wrap, you see how it rotated up over the top of the hook? And then wrap that, wrap that foam down pretty tight. And kind of look at it. See, I, I really want that to go back a little bit far. This is, that's, this is probably the toughest part of this fly. It's fine where it is. I really like for that bend to be back against my hackle. So I'm going to try to grab some more foam there. So I'm going to grab my foam a little farther back. Yep, there we go. Now my bend is right against my hackle. You know, there are all sorts of foam poppers out there with wings on the top and uh, extra little accoutrement on it, so to speak. But this is just a basic one that works well. It's pretty quick to tie. All right, next, we, we want to dub our body. And we're only going to dub to the front, in my case, the front of that initial thread base, because I want to save this part for my whip finish on my head. So we're going to dub from here to here and this kind of this sparkly synthetic dubbing can be a little tough to dub if if you try to put too much on the thread at one time it seems to roll off so i'm going to dub you can see that's a pretty thin dubbing noodle and i'm gonna put just a little bit on there and then add a little bit more and we want a little bit more toward the end of our dubbing noodle because you can see this part of the fly is thicker. 
back here where we wrap the foam than the front where we just wrap the hook. So we want thinner dubbing here and thicker there. So I've got a kind of a thin noodle here. And I'm gonna start wrapping that right there. So it'll, it'll wrap over the over the over the, the over the point of the foam. Yep, and I'm stopping right there so you can see how that looks. That's just wrapped over the point of the foam. So wider. At the front, yeah, the dubbing noodle should be thicker as you move toward the front. That way, you have a fairly level. I mean, it doesn't matter, but just for the sake of technique, just a fairly fairly level body. Now that doesn't mean you can build a super thick noodle with this synthetic stuff, but you can always just dub over itself several times. And you just kind of keep wrapping over itself until you have roughly, got a little taper to it, but that's fine. And it's buggy, you know, we have fiber sticking out over the, over the eye, but that's okay. If those fibers in the front bother you like they do me. I'm on track. Now, again, I just chose this uh, bright colored synthetic dubbing because I wanted a little flash on the bottom of it. I mean, you could put, um, you know, if you ever, ever buy a Google bug, they all have a red spot on the bottom. I mean, you could certainly dub brown here and then get some bright red dubbing and dub you a little red spot on the bottom if you want kind of a hot spot on it or something. So the kind of a lot of creativity you can, you can put into this fly. All right, let's fold our foam forward. You don't need to stretch it, just, just kind of lay it, lay it over the top of the hook. And we're going to take a couple of loose wraps right over the foam. Now my thread is, my thread is right uh, probably about an eye and a half eye length behind the eye of the hook there. And I'm gonna make a couple of wrap, loose wraps right on top of each other. And then I'm gonna cinch down on those. Another one and cinch down, another one and cinch down. And then you can kind of straighten everything up. How far behind that? I'm probably right where I stopped my dubbing, uh, Ed, right? I'm probably maybe an eye length, an uh, eye width and a half, maybe. It's not. We just we just want to make sure we have plenty of space for our whip finish at the end, and we don't uh, crowd that head. Hmm. Now, just to make it easier to work with the eyes, I'm going to go ahead and trim my excess foam off um, with the eyes. <laughs> easier to work with the legs, which go on next. I'm going to trim my excess foam off. And we want to trim it just a bit in front of, and, and don't cut it yet because the angle's important here, just in front of the eye of the hook, just maybe an eye length in front. And you, you don't want to cut it square with the foam because as you can see in, in this sample, you see how it's cut at an angle and it gives that flat face to the water. So with, with the foam angled up like that, you want to hold your scissors at 90 degrees perpendicular to the, to the table. Whoops, I guess I'm blocking the camera there, hang on. Perpendicular to the table and then just trim it straight across. You can see it gives a little, once it comes back out, the front of the, uh, the, front of the fly is, will be perpendicular to the water. Mm. You could even angle your scissors if you wanted it more cupped, you could even angle your scissors out a bit and have it more cupped if you like. Mm. Actually, mine's not totally straight. 
My cut ended up probably three eye lengths in front of the tip of the eye. Is that too much? I think it probably is, Carlton, because it, I think it's going to make the fly skip on the water instead of, and I just, I tried to trim mine and kind of screwed it up a little bit. Okay. I think you could leave it, but I think it's going to make your fly kind of rise above the water instead of just pop a little bit. All right, now it's time for legs. I'm going to give this a couple of more thread wraps there. Now on your leg, we want to fold it in half and cut it at the bend so we have two equal length pieces. Now there are any number of ways you can tie these legs in, but um, we're gonna do one particular way here. And I'm gonna fold it in half again. So I've got a sh fairly short piece here now, but I'm not going to cut it yet because if you cut it, it it's a little harder to, to, to keep both of them in alignment. So I'm just gonna grab that loop and with that's my, just one side. this is just one side. That's right. I have about a two and a half inch, three, well, about a three inch long piece here. So I've, I've folded the leg and cut it in half. And this is one of those halves. And I then fold it in half. And you can cut it here again, if you like, we're going to in, in a bit, but I like to leave mine looped. And we'll put the one on the near side first because what I like to do here is just push it back against the thread and just bring it up over the top of the fly and let it sit right there. Hmm. If you want the leg about even, we can trim it later, but this one doesn't need to be trimmed too much. I have it a little shorter in the front than I do in the back, but not much, probably, well, probably none once I cut it. And I would, I would give it another wrap of thread or two. Yep, it's on the side. Hmm. And you'll notice whenever you uh, cinch the thread down, the, leg, the legs get much more perpendicular to the body. If you don't like that, you can make some thread wraps here and widen this, this uh, notch out a bit, and they won't, they won't kick out as much. But I kind of like them kicked out like that. Okay, let's do the other side. Here's, here's my other half. And again, I'm gonna slip it against my thread. And I'm doing it on the other side of the hook. So when it gets up to the side, I'm gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna turn my vise so you can see that. So now I have it on the side of the hook, just like I did on this side. All right, so let's take a few thread wraps for both of those legs. And if it, like these legs have slipped under, so you just pull them back up into position. You want them on the side because if they're underneath very far, they'll hang on the, they'll foul on the hook, uh, hook bend. Now we're gonna leave our loops for right now. Okay. Now all that remains now is whip finish it and, and trim the legs. So to whip finish, I'm going to grab my whip finish tool or you can use your half hitch, whatever rich your preference is. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I'm gonna pull the I do it where you can see it on the camera. I'm going to pull the foam up. 
and move my thread and make a few wraps right behind the eye of the hook. And then I'll take my whip finish tool and you kind of just use it at, at an angle. And that's, see those loops on that, um, on those legs don't hang on the thread if you don't cut them yet. See how they just kind of brush off the thread and trim it off. Massage your legs and get them just where you like, and then cut those loops. And there's a bluegill gurgler. Yeah. I kind of turned upside down so I could see the eye. Uh huh. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you know, the fish don't see the top, but I'm going to take a brown sharpie and I'm going to put a few spots on it just to make me feel like I'm a popper artist, which I'm not. I'm also going to put an eye on each side. Okay. That's it. Here's here's a sharpie if you want to put some spots on it. Mm. The fish don't see them, but it makes it makes me feel like an artist. But I can do random spots on the back. Makes me feel like Kurt Beecher. <laughs> All right, and I am going to put a little bit of head cement on the bottom. A little bit of head cement on the bottom. I don't think you have to, but uh, that, that thread's pretty protected under that foam there. I'm going to put a little bit of head cement there. And that is it. It's a pretty straightforward little pattern. Um, and like I said, a couple of times I've fished it so far, it fishes, fishes quite well. It's easy to cast. When I was out at Kincaid Lake that day, it was, it was pretty windy and it's not that wind resistant. A um, little bit lighter than a, um, a regular hard body popper, but I think you could pretty easily tie these down to a 12. Much, much smaller than that, I think it would get a little tedious. I, I tied tens and they're almost as easy to tie as this, but this eight is prob probably the easiest. Okay. What's the width of the uh, materials here? The width of the foam is, this is cut, this is actually five sixteenths of an inch wide for the size eight hook, but it, what it, if you put it against a hook, it should measure let me show those on Zoom where they can see it too. It should measure roughly outside to outside on the hook. This, let me angle it a little better. Maybe a little bit wider than that. Um, in the description, the guy Panfish on the Fly, he did it a hook gap and width. And I, I did my first one like that and it looked too narrow to me. And what I found with narrow poppers is they'll lay over on their side on the, on, the, uh, on the water. Now, when you cast this one, it very likely will land, like any other popper, it will land upside down in the water. It could, it could land upside down, right side up, but it often lands upside down. But just two or three quick strips, and it'll flip back over the weight of the hook and the foam on, on the other side. It'll flip back over, and then you'll start noticing you're getting a little, little splash of water from the pop. Yep. And he also puts little stick on eyes on the side, but that's a fancier touch than I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. I did paint some with my Sharpie on the side, as you can see there, but, uh, but that, that, that's about all I'm going to do. Yes, sir. Orlando. So for this area, this color and what other colors? I think this color would be good. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a bunch cut that y'all can take. Each one of these strips should tie two flies. I think, 
Yep, yep, that'll tie that'll tie another one. Um, are these just two, two layers laminate that you laminated? Uh -huh, I did. This is Walmart craft foam with 3M spray adhesive. Yep. So you get it at Lowe's. Yeah. You spray it on each each piece, let it sit for about a minute till it's tacky, lay them on there, put a like a board on top and wait, and you've got nice laminated foam. Probably Orlando, this green color, since um, I don't know, this was this brown was really effective when I used it a couple of weeks ago, caught those bass and bluegill on it. Um, I'm probably gonna tie some up with green, and I'll probably use like an olive sparkle dubbing on the top, and I probably will put a little red, red hot spot up here of red, red or pink dubbing, or kind of in this front. Do I? Didn't use sparkle foam yet. No. Uh. Uh. This L L S L. This is no. This is hair, hairy ice dub. It's it's a mixture of um, rabbit hair's ear and ice dub, which is it's a real nice. Um, it dubs easier than pure SLF, but you can certainly use SLF. SLF work, or ice dub would work just fine. Um, I was I actually, I tied one when I was in uh, Gulf Shores this weekend with just plain old uh, rabbit dubbing, just plain tan rabbit. And it, it looks fine. But I like, I like the sparkle on here. But do you want to tie one more? Sure. One more? Okay, good. All right. Zoomers, are y'all with me? I want to tie one more? Sure. Sure. Uh, let me see if I have some flash. Yes. Let me see if I have some dubbing here that might. See, like here's uh, bright yellow. This is hairlines. Um, just plain rabbit dubbing, bright yellow. That'd work well too for, for a yellow bottom or a black bottom. Um, the hairy ice dubbing also comes in a bunch of colors. This is peacock. You see that's really a nice bright, bright green color. I don't have any red or pink dubbing with me or I would make a make a hot spot. Okay. All right, let's get our hook going here. All right, let me start the camera back. Okay. All right, for our second copy, let's go ahead and secure our hook and don't drop it like I just did. All right. And again, I'm starting my thread back. That's a Kelly Gallup trick to mark the front of your body with thread. That way you kind of know where to stop. And then this is a Carlton Townsend trip, a trick to keep your thread wraps together. Hold that tag in at an angle and wrap against that tag in, and it will shove most of your thread wraps together. And then we wrap back to above the hook barb and then back to the hook point. Choose a little piece of marabou that looks, looks right to you. See, here's one that's like I was talking about, it has this little webby piece. I'm just gonna pick that off. And I'm gonna make this one a little thinner than that last one, not quite as bushy on the tail, just, just for a change of pace. So roughly a, a hook in length. And tie it from the hook point back to the hook barb and then bring your thread back to the point. Tie some of that stuff down. All right. And then after we tie our tail in, we want to bring our thread back to the base of that tail. That's where we're going to tie our hackle in. Now, to size hackle, it, if you put it around the shaft of the hook, it should be just a little bit wider than the hook gap. That's, that's the dry fly method of sizing hackle. See, when I wrap it around the hook, you can see it's just about a hook gap 
and maybe a third. I actually want a little bit, a little bit wider piece for this one. Yeah, it's about the same. Let me grab a little wider. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. We're going to tie it in by the tip. So we don't want to be right at the tip because it's really fragile there. So we come back about an inch or so and stroke those fibers back. And again, we want the curve facing, the concave of the curve facing the hook. And I take, I put that gap right over my thread. And then I'll just tie it in and wrap my thread forward to the hook point. And so I've, I've tied in that feather from the base of the tail all the way to the hook point. And then we trim off that remaining tip. And the only thing tricky about wrapping this hackle is you are above the hook point and you have to kind of work it in front of the hook point and work it into the gap because if you snag that hook point with it, it will likely, it could very likely uh, cut your feather. And that first wrap wants to, if it wants to twist on you like mine's doing, just stroke those feathers back with your finger. And again, make fairly close wraps with it. They don't have to be touching, but just fairly close wraps. And as I said earlier, you don't have to put the hackle. If you want to tie up some of these and just don't put hackle on them, that's fine. Or if you want to add a little flash back there, it's Y'all know the Cajun Ninja Cook? Y'all know that guy? He is really good. And he, his expression is, you know, like everybody has their own best version of the gumbo. He says, you do you. So, <laughs> and fly tie and you do you. Um, I love that expression because it's like, you know, everybody's taste is a little different. So I'm going to tie the front of that feather down. Justin Wilson's parts of wine. Yeah. And you know, this is not whiting dry fly hackle we're using here. This is this is a cheap step, but this really is what you want for this. You just want a nice little bushy spot right behind the right behind the body. And I'm gonna try to make my other piece of foam work just to see if it'll do two. I think it will. I trim that. And again, we, we tie it down with our bottom color facing up. So I line up my the back of my cut, my point. And make a couple of loose wraps and start cinching down and compress, compress that foam on the hook chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be plenty of foam. And if you haven't seen it at, at Walmart or Michaels, that that pack of foam is about a six inch thick stack of tons of different colors of it. The lifetime supply, that's right. Now they also make have sheets that are I think 11 by 14 at Michaels, not Michaels, they close, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Yep. And um, you cut one of those and you've got enough poppers <laughs> that color to last you, last you a while. 
All right, so we dub next and we start with a thin dubbing noodle because we have that thick foam back there. And All right. And you usually have to dub several times here because you can't you can't dub a long enough dubbing uh, dubbing noodles to go all the way to the front and still have room to wrap your thread. Only go one direction with it. Don't, don't, don't let it reverse direction. Of course, I'm moving my thumb to my left and my forefinger to my right. And I'm going to stop right where I stopped my thread in the front. Where I, where I started my thread, I'm going to stop my dubbing, dub body right Was there. Back, back, yeah, about, yeah, um, you, you can see, so now I'm about an eye length and a half behind the, behind yeah, the eye length. Yep. Take away, so we got, I'm going to add some more. Yeah, stop it. Give yourself, you don't want to crowd it too much, but give yourself at least, an eye length is probably enough to do your, to do your, um, your whip finish. As buggy as this stuff is, the dubbing's gonna give it some legs like a nymph. All right, then we pull our foam over the front. Couple of wraps, tighten down, and a few more wraps. And I like this slightly wider body. Again, if you cut if you cut it to the inside dimension of the of the hook gap, it, it looks a little little narrow to me. All right, we can now trim. And again, I'm not holding my scissors perpendicular to the foam. I'm holding the foam up at an angle, the scissors perpendicular to the tabletop. All right, if y'all catch, uh, catch fish on this, you've got to post some pictures to the uh, KFF share page out there if, if you're on Facebook. If you're not, email them to me and I'll post them up there. Can we, can we post? You can, oh yeah, you can post. It, it just goes through an approval, either Denise or myself or uh, somebody else's. Rich, you're in admin, admin on, aren't you? Somebody, a third, somebody else is an admin on it. Denise still is. It's her. She started the page. So, all right, let's do legs. Let's do legs. Let's do our supposedly olive barred legs here. This stuff looks better with with uh, Chris's blue. It matches much better. It does. <laughs> yeah. Now, electric blue would be great. Damselfly or okay, what's the difference between a damselfly and a dragonfly? A damselfly is like a mini dragonfly, but when they are at rest, their wings stick up like this versus out like this. Like a drag. Okay, the wings are upright, and there's are they smaller? And, oh yeah, a lot smaller. And the tail is usually blue or green. Uh -huh. Usually blue. Yeah, blonde hair. They're, they're from Denmark. 
they're Denmark bugs. Okay, remember now to do the legs, I'm just pushing it against my thread and then just bringing it over the top and laying it there. Now you could certainly lay your legs on the side and, and wrap it if you like, but I find this a little bit easier. And then my other set on the other side. Oops. Now, if you find your legs fouling in the uh, and the gap of the hook too much, you can, you know, trim them when you're on the water, you can trim them back a little bit, but they don't seem to foul too badly, particularly if you keep them up on the side and don't let them get down, down under. All right. And then we, Whip finish and good to go. Wrap our thread behind the eye. And you can hold it back like I'm doing with your, hold the front back with your finger. But see again, those legs don't, when they still have that loop, they don't hang on the whip finish. Bluegill gurgler. Yeah, the, the gurgler, like the, the gart side gurgler, the big gene lettuce in a, I think a size one all gart side gurgler one time. It's a topwater saltwater fly, um, bass, whatever, whatever your preference is. Um, And of course, length of tail is up to you as well. Let me get a little head cement on the bottom. Hmm. All right. Hey Bill. Yes, sir. I didn't think I didn't think that compares to the uh pred panfish predator that we tied, was it last year? Yeah, that Skip Morris pattern. Um, yeah, you know, it's one. It's a lot smaller than this one, and um, I frankly didn't have a. I, I think maybe I had a bad couple of days with it, but I didn't have a lot of luck with it. And it's it's a bit harder to tie because remember you you put those legs to the rear, um, right, right, through um, with a needle. That's right. That's right. You do. I forgot. The projector looks good now. Our lights just went off here. I'm not sure why. So, well, I've, I've got power up here. But you lost your internet. No, no, I've still got, still got. There's Peter, Mark moving around. That's was back there. Good. Flip, what do you think? You're the foam expert among us here. You've tied a bunch of them. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> I like them, uh, Bill. I, I I tie these for uh, pack and paddle. Oh, do you? Yeah. 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 It's a uh, it's a pretty quick tie. I mean, once you get rolling with them, you can crank them out in five or six minutes. Um, now, do you add anything flip to the tail other than just marabou and hackle, or do you even use hackle on it? No, I do. I do use the hackle. I put yeah. I, I put a little uh, hot 
uh, I put an orange hackle on mine. All right, let me let me spotlight you so we can see that here too. Um, all right, got you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And then I put a little bit of yellow under the throat. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yellow oh, dubby. Yeah, they can't see it here because our, our camera. Let me let me turn the camera toward you on the. Hang on. Uh, I don't think we can see it. Nah, we can't see it. Oh, it was. Looks good. I had it for a second. I had it for a second. Yeah. It's good. I like Thank you. Yeah, he he used red red hackle in it and okay. uh, looked really good. <clears throat> of course, you could play around with any, any color schemes. You, that's what's cool about this fly. Just play mm -hmm. around with any color schemes you like. I'm just wondering if the sparkle stuff would work. The sparkle um, foam, yeah. The, yep. So can you tell me how you glued those pieces of foam together? Sure. Is that Tom? Yes. Um, Tom, what we did was, um, I mean, I just used, I, I bought, I think it's number 77. Is that the, the spray? Yeah, the spray is 3M spray adhesive. And it's number hmm. 77. You get it in uh, at Lowe's. It comes in a brown can. Um, and you just you just spray a uh, not a super thick coating, but just coat each each piece of foam on, on the glue side and let it dry for about a minute. And then you put them together and put a uh, like a board or a book or something on it and a weight and let it dry for just a short period of time. I usually let mine dry overnight, but just, and it, um, it's, it's done, it's bonded. Okay, thanks. Sure, sure. Now, you could also, if you had like a single layer of foam, if you wanted to add like a, like a bright hot spot, like a bright pink hot spot at the top, you know, the fish aren't gonna see that, but uh, hang on just a second. Let me get a spotlight back again. Um, you could put a single piece of short foam here and um, that is out of focus. Oh, hang on. Sorry, I, I did my camera trying to get flip and focus. There we go. So you could put like a little half inch or quarter inch piece of single layer foam under those thread wraps there whenever you uh, uh, before you tie your legs on or, or even after you tie your legs on if you want if you have trouble seeing that in the water or a white white piece anything anything you like yeah all right i need to put my spot so let me borrow my sharpie there carlson a lot of the flies that i have this makes this makes a huge difference in catching the fish. I need an eye on each side. Hundreds of different kinds of Looking down. Uh, I haven't. Yeah, that just makes it look cool. And I did a little eye on the side. Not that that makes any difference. Yeah, yeah, a little eye on the side. I'm sure the fish can see that. So. Oh, there's Jim Johnson joining us. Hey, Jim, how'd it go? Hey, boy. All right. They survived me. They survived you? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, Jim presented to our local Master Gardeners Club tonight on birds in the backyard and showed his bird photography. Man, I tell you what, we need to start a fly fishing meeting just scrolling through that PowerPoint. It is, those are beautiful images. I mean, they, they really are. So um, my wife talked him into it. She's president of that organization. So, all right, well, there we are. Flip. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, thank, thank you, Bill. Bill. Nice, nice fly. Thank All right, you, Bill. Great fly. All right. Thanks.